Hello beautifuls, welcome back to my Chanel, my lovelies. Oh my goodness, I have had such an amazing last week and weekend. I had my tattoo done last Tuesday. I can't show you it in this video because my arm looks absolutely repulsive. So you're not getting to see that just yet, my loves. You might get a sneak peek if you follow me over on Twitch. This weekend that's just been, for, for um context, it's now Monday morning and I... I'm broken! I went to a club event with Roly called Extreme and it was the best club night. Well, day. Club day. It started at noon. It was the best, best, best event I have ever been to in my life. I absolutely loved every second of it and I was throwing my body around so much to French core that now I'm just like, oh, I can really like feel every bone and muscle being like, you need to be punished. Look what you've done. Good heavens. So my lovelies, it is that time. We have come finally to the time of me spending months collating, well, is it months? It's probably a few weeks to be honest, collating all of the information I could find to do an America's Next Top Scandal Girls Cycle 1, where are they now? <laughs> Let me just tell you, there is so much information about the contestants on America's Next Top Model. This was quite possibly the most, like, interesting thing to have to, like, sift through and pick out all the information from. Because uh, unlike some of the other, like, reality TV shows that we've seen, this has gone on for, like, what was it, 21 cycles with some all-star cycles? So for context, I have reacted to the entire first cycle of America's Next Top Model, and I will be starting cycle two shortly. It is available on my Chanel if you wish to watch it, and I think that this will also be present in a gigantic supercut of every single episode that I will be uploading shortly. I reckon that video is going to be about 10 hours long. <laughs> so with that being said, my loves, today I'm actually on the Evian. I'm on the Evian. There's no Poop Swally Max here or Monster. Just Evian. Mummy needs it. <laughs> and without further ado, shall we begin America's Next Top Model Cycle 1? Where are they now? So I think the way that we should do this is talk about the contestants in elimination order. I feel like that makes the most sense. And I do actually want to say a massive thank you to Reddit. The America's Next Top Model Reddit on, or well, subreddit on Reddit made this process so much more straightforward because people are already having conversations about the contestants and where they are now. So unfortunately, or fortunately, I never really know how to explain that, like escaping the claws of Tyra Banks girls seems to be a good thing, but also it's kind of frustrating in a competition if you don't make it past the first week. I can fully understand that. We have Tessa. Now Tessa was not actually originally in the lineup to be in America's Next Top Model. She was apparently handpicked by Tyra alongside Giselle. And if you remember in the first ever episode, after they'd whittled them down to eight finalists and then brought them into the competition, Tyra was like, oh, surprise, surprise. Oh, we have these two other contestants coming to join the house. So Tessa was the first to go. You can go back and watch that episode if you want to see all the juicy details about that. But after the show, she actually decided not to continue modeling, but not after, actually modeling a handful of times. Tessa modeled for Noah Kalina and Joey Quintero. And weirdly enough also, in the next week, they had that uh, photo shoot for Stuff magazine. Now, Tyra was always trying to push this, this entire season as like a high fashion thing. But there was like eight full episodes of like nudity and bikini modeling for some reason. So I don't know quite what she was thinking there. But you know, I'm not Tyra, I don't know. So Tessa actually behind the scenes did compete in that photo shoot. Oh, I've just poked you. The bikini modeling shoot for Stuff magazine with that interesting photographer who I thought was like, is that a real London accent? I don't know. So this was not televised and was not put in the season at all, but she actually did model for the Stuff magazine and it did go into Stuff magazine. As I just mentioned, she actually didn't model further after this show and after those specific shoots. She decided to leave modeling and focus on being a mother to her two children. So once again, escape the clutches of Tyra and the machine of America's Next Top Model. So I've managed to gather these images from a website called allantm.net and I just want to say, what is this comment here on this gorgeous photo? She's like, I love it. My favorite Tessa photo, but I just like the mouth. Personally, I would prefer it to be a bit smaller since it looks awkward with the veil. Sorry, you want her to make her mouth smaller? On October 22nd, 2012, at four in the morning, this person was like, I really don't like the mouth. It needs to be smaller. For goodness sake, girls. Also, absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing prepared me to discover this image. <sighs> I mean, if this isn't a post-America's Next Top scandal, I don't really know what is. 
Why? 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 Next, we have Katie. Now, I feel like Katie kind of had a little bit of a bad rap on the show here because they kept giving them, like, really sexy photo shoots to do and then kept telling the models that they were photographing too sexy. And basically, Katie had that exact problem. She was sent home because she was modelling too sexy. She put her finger slightly through her bikini pant and literally Janice Dickinson was like, No! This is the worst thing I've ever seen in my life! I was the world's first supermodel! Which, you know, it's Janice, so let's be honest. Since the show, Katie has had an absolutely flourishing career in the television industry. So her IMDb page is pretty extensive. And considering she was an early out in America's Next Top Model, she has she's turned that around and made it absolutely something incredible. She has 14 producer rights. She's been an actress in 30 different events. She's been camera woman for two things. She's been a writer four times. She's directed. She's been a cinematographer. She's acted as herself. And she's helped with archival footage. She's also appeared in Maxim Online, Ruckus Magazine, Marie Claire, Live Lifestyle Magazine and Vegan Lifestyle Magazine, alongside many other articles as well. She's appeared in so many campaigns for all sorts of different international brands that I, I don't even know if I can list them all here. She's had such a successful career. Skechers, Elastiderm Skincare, AT&T, Nike, Shandon Champagne, Supreme Protein, Cadillac, Proactive, Payless. And she was also on NBC's Deal or No Deal, where she was there for over four years. She is a television, television, television woman, professional television. She also has regular roles on popular TV shows such as CSI NY, Las Vegas, Entourage, Rules of Engagement, Chuck, Working Class, How to Get Away with Murder, and Two and a Half Men. With her work as a philanthropist, she also founded Peace for Animals, which is like a charitable organization for animal welfare. What an incredible career she's had. And it all kind of started with America's Next Top Model. And I wonder if maybe her going second kind of pushed her to be like, no, I'm not having this. I'm going to forge my own path. Congratulations, Katie, for... Showing everyone, you've shown everyone, sis, thriving and surviving. Next, we have Nicole. So Nicole had kind of like a really bad rap on this show. Because this show was brand new, none of the contestants really knew what this show was going to bring them. But the way that Jay Manuel spoke to Nicole kind of left me feeling really quite rotten at the end of it. And the fact that she had to say that she was not feeling well and she didn't want to go to the event that night. And they straightened her gorgeous curly hair and took out her hair extensions, but also left a few in and gave her this like bump it style. Bump it up with bump it. Get that salon style look fast and easy. It was a choice and I'm not surprised why she was so left like frustrated and annoyed with the experience. In the end she was eliminated in that episode because she wasn't like committed to the idea of having this makeover and the makeovers were quite hateful weren't they let's be honest. And America's Next Top Scandal Girls is known for its disgraceful hateful makeovers. After America's Next Top Model aired she did actually have quite a successful modeling career. Again a lot of the early outs seem to have done very well for themselves. So Nicole appeared in several maternity catalogues and magazines. She also had a spread in the stuff magazine, just like everyone seemed to from this cycle. She's appeared in Maxim, Rebel Inc. magazine, E-Pregnancy, and Surf Illustrated. Nicole has also modelled for Yandy Lingerie, Bikinilicious.com, Nordstrom, Due Maternity, Nar Lube, Four Issues, Top Floor, and La Isla Couture. And she's also been featured in advertisements. I think this is only billboards. It might actually also be a little bit of, like, film footage as well. For Caesars Palace, the infamous hotel in Las Vegas. So some of the information I'm finding here is from four years ago so that's 2018 oh god 2018 <laughs> and at the time nicole had just started a sunless tanning business servicing her like local area and interestingly enough very similar to katie she's also been featured on deal or no deal as a model now the deal or no deal in the uk is a bit different to the deal or no deal in america in the uk it's very much like oh no what's in your box out. Whereas in America, it seems a lot more like a glamorous extravaganza. Here it's very like, oh, I've got the penny. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Unbelievable. <laughs> Interestingly enough, I did kind of feel a little bit strange watching a couple of the scenes with Nicole on the phone to her boyfriend. They are, in fact, together. They tied the knot in 2017. And I know I'm the first. I'm the absolute first person to be like, oh, he's being rubbish to you. Maybe you should just leave. But clearly, what do I know about anything to do with relationships? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that got a bit real. They are still together and absolutely thriving, which, you know, is actually quite beautiful to see, especially coming out of something so bizarre as America's Next Top Model. What a weird show that was. What a weird show. How did we let her get away with this? <laughs> Next up, we have Ebony. Now, I think Ebony was treated quite appallingly by this show. But in the same sort of way, it is kind of groundbreaking that they showed a lesbian kiss on TV that wasn't like part of an overarching storyline of like, I don't know, 
ugh, the, the male gays, should we say? And not the gays, but like the gays. Do you know what I mean? Unfortunately, she was treated quite harshly by um, people on the show. The moisturizer debacle. Do you remember that? The moisturizer debacle. And it was all a bit like, mm, I didn't feel nice watching that section. And I'm sure you guys absolutely didn't either. Also, I feel like they absolutely read Ebony for filth when they gave her the loudest shoes possible and she had to do a little skip in the commercial challenge. Someone in the comments of that video mentioned that they can actually give you like special shoes that don't make any noise when you are like on set and when you need to do like specific acting things. Why didn't they give her those? That's so strange. It just feels like set up to fail, girls. Production. Ebony also had quite a lovely career after America's Next Top Model and we've actually spoken a little bit of backwards and forwards in uh, DMs as well. Hi, Ebony, if you're watching. And she has a book coming out, so keep your eyes peeled for that, my loves. So after the show, Ebony was signed to Downtown Model Management before moving to Uptown Model Management. She's walked in fashion shows for Sashay and Ice Blue and she's also been shot by some incredibly notorious photographers, such as Isabel Choi and Umari Jason. And she's also had full page spreads in Hype Magazine and Esquire Girls. And she's also been in a film called Real Gay, which was in 2005. So that's like a couple of years just after the original season ended. And also in something called Violet Tendencies in 2010. Next we have Giselle. So Giselle had a storyline that was kind of like, she's too young. She doesn't really know what's going on. And I feel like the judges weren't being very nice to Giselle. It was just kind of like constantly talking about her having like very little confidence or no confidence or she needs to boost her confidence. Bearing in mind when it was filmed, she was 18 years old and I can't imagine having a huge amount of confidence at 18. I don't think I had. I don't think I... I mean, maybe I had a little bit of that, like, ridiculous delusional confidence that we all seem to have when we're teenagers for some unknown reason. But I cannot imagine going on a show like America's Next Top Model at 18 years old and feeling in any way, shape or form confident. I don't know. After the season finished airing, Giselle appeared in Switch magazine and she also modeled for a brand called Simply Fashion. She was also a model on Deal or No Deal. Now there seems to be like a funneling situation of like go on America's Next Top Model Girl and then go straight on to Deal or No Deal for several years. So it does kind of show you that there is some level of career availability to early outs still in television, even though it comes from America's Next Top Model, which isn't exactly the nicest. I have such a hate-love relationship with America's Next Top Model. It's got so much nostalgia for me, but also at the same rate, it's just like... <sighs> How did this happen? <laughs> she also hosted segments on the Tyra Banks show and Fox Sports Net 54321 show. I don't know what that is, but I'm sure that's something to do with Fox News and sports. Sports ball, go team. Oh, I'm a mouse. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you remember correctly, Giselle was also a dancer, a classically trained dancer. And we saw it in one of her photo shoots where they were like, Oh, we love your motion and fluid motion, but we have to train the dancer out of you if you want to be a model, girls. Well, it just goes to show that after the season aired, she actually had a flourishing dance career as well. She performed in Disney's Fantasmic and also in a couple of Pitbull music videos. She also danced for Michael Jackson's 45th birthday. Now, if you remember, there was a segment in the show, I think she said, I would really love to meet Michael Jackson. So I guess in that sense, there was a dream met there. As of right now, she actually owns an LLC, which is called GLS Enterprises, and it's an umbrella corporation for entertainment, real estate, and kiss the world. Next up, we have Kissy. Now, during this week, this was the week that they all flew to Paris for the uh, ridiculous couple of episodes that they were in Paris for. And also a few things that I didn't really like watching happened in Paris, actually. I believe that this was the photo shoot in which they were asked to model with that guy. Was it the guy that they, like, tried to produce that, like, uh, Shannon really, like, fell in love with? She had a photo of him and was like, oh, that guy. Do you remember him? The photos for this challenge were absolutely absolutely appalling. That photographer was not worth his money at all. After the show, Kissy actually decided to keep a relatively low profile. Since appearing on the show, she has gone on to work under the management of Gila Ruse, but that management company closed in 2009 and afterwards, Kissy just decided to keep a low profile. Kissy also graced the pages of King Magazine and Complex Magazine and has also appeared in Church's Chicken television commercial. I'm not sure what that is. I'll have to look up some photos for that. It's a fast food chicken restaurant and there are no videos or pictures available of Kissy's commercial appearance. And then there is no more information from Kissy after those dates, which was about 2006. So wherever you are, Kissy, in the world, I hope you are thriving and surviving, my love. Next, we have Robin, which was very much painted as the villain in this entire season. And I kind of have complex feelings towards Robin, shall we say. 
But again, I don't necessarily know if it's all just because of reality TV production like ethics or lack thereof, shall we say, or if I genuinely would not get along with someone like Robin. So let's get into it, shall we? I remember Robin being so upset, like seeing, uh, like talking to Ebony about her being gay and being like, I don't want to meet your girlfriend, no. And then like hiding away in her room. Mm, no, I'm not into all that. Now, if you remember, Robin went home on the week that they were meant to have like the new diamonds, diamonds photo shoot. Remember that in that Parisian, was it a restaurant or a hotel? Parisian place where they were meant to like fully be naked with, with like being covered but also like illusion of nakedness but it sounded like they pretty much wanted to get them completely naked to model diamonds do you remember that and she was she got visibly very upset and i'm very much of the opinion of if you don't want to do something you don't have to do it there is not an hour i want to spend in my life where i'm not having fun kim Catral. so after the show she actually changed the spelling of her name and she now goes by rabin spelt like this and she was the only contestant whose photos were not included for the Stuff Magazine uh, spread, photo shoot spread. Now that to me, that to me reeks a little bit of uh, body shaming, actually. Not here for that. Don't like that. The amount of time she was constantly told in this show that she was just too big. It's ridiculous. Absolutely unhinged. After her appearance on the show, Robin went on to do a baby fat fashion show with Elise and Kissy, and she was featured in the July 2003 issues of the TV Guide. And I would just like to point your attention here to the article in the TV Guide, because they actually put in some quotes from the show, America's Next Top Model itself, and how the judges were talking about Robin's body. I think it's absolutely disgusting that Burns said she's too big and not pretty enough to me. Like, okay, you're here to judge models, but like, you've cast this woman in a reality TV show just to be awful to her. I do not think it's appropriate to say something like, there are so many beautiful black women on the planet and she's not one of them. And I absolutely do not agree with that. I think it's disgusting, girls. Does anybody remember that? The TV Guide. That is an absolute throwback. She did actually go on to also appear next to Janice Dickinson in an issue of O Magazine, which kind of makes me a bit like, wow. Janice was everywhere. And I think this is like the weirdest like crossover I think I've ever heard of. She also went on to act in The Young and the Restless. And I kind of get that real like pageant, like Young and the Restless vibe from Robin. Like if there was two people in the room and I'd be like, oh, she should be good. Two people in the room? If there was some people in the room and I, Robin was there, I'd be like, yeah, she could get on to yeah, The Young and the Restless. Like those two things just seem to coexist in my like mind for some reason. Do you know what I mean? Do you get that vibe? Okay, so I don't know how much of this story I'm going to be able to say. You can actually find out a little bit more about it if you just do some internet cyber sleuthing yourself, my lovelies, because YouTube is very, very hot on certain words if you mention them because of the CC captions. So, in 2014, Dominic Jeffries, along with his six-year-old sister, went missing from Robin's home. Now, I'm just going to read you a little section from actionnews5.com, which is an article that covered this story. Investigators have found a missing nine-year-old boy after searching for him for nearly seven hours. Police say they said him found him hiding in the bushes near an intersection, and it is the fourth time in two years that Dominic Jeffries has ran away from home. Now, bearing in mind, Robin is the guardian of both Jeffries and his sister. According to the police, he he argued with his foster mother about his homework on Monday night and she last saw Dominic running from his house at around 1 a.m. The following morning, Dominic was found to be perfectly safe and not injured at all in a forest near his home and police said that Dominic was diagnosed with oppositional defiant disorder. So you are more than welcome to go off and do some more investigation about that story because it's kind of wild from start to finish. And with that, let's move on. Next we have Elise. Also, can we just talk about this ridiculous photo they chose to use for Elise? Why has she got this, like, sensible daytime scarf on? And what is she doing with her little ankles? Why on earth did the photographer go, yeah, what you need to do is sit like this. International model superstar with her lovely daytime scarf. Now, Elise's storyline throughout this entire show was kind of wild. The very fact they tried to paint her out as, an, as having an eating disorder, whilst also controlling everything that they ate, and everything that they heard, and everything that they filmed, like... They tried to make her out as if she was unwell, like purging in bathrooms and things like that. And it's like, well, surely, surely there would have been some other evidence than just hearsay from other contestants. I don't know. Didn't feel comfortable watching that. If there was something that serious, there should have been trigger warnings on this show for it. There should have been other sorts of things being like, if you've been affected by anything in this show, please call this helpline. Anything like that. But I do genuinely believe that it is much more of a reality TV 
production claw moment, should we say. So Elise, I believe, had the most successful modeling career at the end of America's Next Top Model. I'm going to read you a section here that I have found on Reddit. It says here, Elise has been incredibly successful, especially in Asia. She has had print advertisements for Giordano, Chanel and Chow, Sang Sang Jewelry, and appeared on the cover of Harper's Bazaar Hong Kong. She wrote her first book titled Beauty and the Biz, The International Adventures of America's Third to Next Top Model, which is kind of like a killer title if you ask me. Based on her experience and her live journal weblog, which was published in Hong Kong in 2006, she has appeared in multiple book signings across Hong Kong as well, and she has been featured in advertisements for brands such as Azona, Chow, Sang Sang, Dao, Darker, DTC Diamonds, Flair by Jacques, Giordino, Imaroon, Mavon, Motorola, Paul Key, Sasa Cybercolors, and Staccato. Ugh. Her career goes even further to show. Overseas, she has been signed with Zuka Tokyo, ZEM Osaka, Mannequin Singapore, Model Genesis Hong Kong, Chadwick Sydney, Dream Models Hong Kong, and Elite Santiago. This sounds like I'm reading out my Patreons. <laughs> <laughs> so you can pretty much tell that Elise has had a super thriving career. Um, there is a little tiny part of me that's kind of disappointed that she didn't become a doctor. But you know what? It's fine. She's been absolutely thriving and surviving, my loves. I've just found a link as well to where she did an AMA, or rather an impromptu AMA on Reddit. But it was deleted, so I can't find out any of the juicy information. She wrote it five years ago, and apparently it's just gone. Completely gone. Can't find that. I would have loved to have seen the juicy gossip that she shared. Next! we have Shannon. Now, Shannon kind of had a really interesting run on this show. It kind of felt a little bit like Shannon wanted to come out of her shell, but because of the uh, Christian storyline, shall we say, and Robin being such a domineering personality, I kind of felt like Shannon was a little bit of like a shrinking violet on the show and kind of finally came out of her shell and really gelled with the other finalists in the last couple of episodes. Shannon also went on to compete in an all-stars season of America's Next Top Model. Now, I haven't seen that, so I'm going to try not to give myself spoilers for that because I don't want spoilers, even though it went, it came out, what, maybe like 10 years ago, 12 years ago, 13 years ago, maybe? I still don't want to give myself spoilers because I do eventually want to watch that at some point on this Chanel. That's probably in like four years' time by now, but I tell you what, those years will come flying past, scales. So, since America's Next Top Model, Shannon has modeled for Harmony Bell Boutique, Nuj Novaket, I think that's how you say it, Macy's, Dillard's, Savora, Baker Shoes, Speedo, and Alison Smith. Jewelries. She's also appeared in magazines such as L Girl, Teen Vogue, Sydney Magazine, Six Degrees, and Ford Fusion. She's also appeared on the cover of Nashville Lifestyle Weddings, Arizona Foothills Magazine, and Sound and Vision Magazine. She's had such a phenomenal career as a model. Her runway shows include, but are not limited to, Richard Tyler, Alvin Valley, Alice and Olivia, Sprite Street Couture, L Girl, Walmart Meets America's Next Top Models. Now, if you remember correctly, Shannon made it through the episode that Robin was eliminated when she was told that she kind of had to model nude for the diamonds. As I mentioned with Robin, it's the same goes for Shannon. I think if you do not want to do something and you are feeling uncomfortable in a situation, you absolutely do not have to do it. It is your body and it is your rights. Now, I remember watching similar kind of events on America's Next Top Model way back in the day when I was like 16 or 17 years old. And I was like, oh my God, I can't believe they wouldn't do that. Don't they understand the opportunity? opportunities they're throwing away. Ugh. And now looking back at it, I'm like, Luxaria, what were you thinking? Like, of course. Of course. But this show is not made for people who want to get in the fashion industry. This show is made for reality TV rating. That's all. And of course, spoiler alert, my loves, we have our first place winner, America's Next Top Model, Adrienne. Now, there is actually quite a lot of controversy about the winner of season one of America's Next Top Model, both involving her that isn't her fault, and kind of recently, she's been sharing some opinions online through various social media outlets that, um... To put it lightly, and to kind of like, oh, I don't really want to get too heavy in this video, uh, I do not agree with. It's a little bit transphobic, it's a little bit homophobic, it's a little bit anti-vax. I'm just not interested in having these conversations on my channel. They are publicly available, you can go and see. There will be some links in the description box to various things, and also the posts that I'm collating these information from in the description box below if you want to check out further things. I'm not going to go fully down the route of what opinions she has exactly shared in this video. All I'm going to say is, I do not agree with them. Now that I've moved that to one side, there is actually a drama I do want to talk about 
about that is related to America's Next Top Model and the fact that Adrienne won. After her stint on America's Next Top Model, Adrienne has been very outspoken about her time on the show. She told various viewers, including Stepping Out magazine, that she wasn't given the Revlon modeling contract that she was supposed to get as a winner. Tyra really didn't help us out and the show didn't put any money into them. She even went as far as saying, now this is a direct quote, basically it was our show that saved the network and it was the biggest show ever. We trusted Tyra, but we have all been screwed over. She did not get her winnings from America's Next Top Model. Now, that is kind of gross. Actually, a really gross thing that just goes to show again, this thing that I've said all the way along. If they're not going to provide help to the models after the show, do they really think that they're models or are these just characters in a cast of a television show? And was that ever told to them? Did any of these people have informed consent that maybe, you know, they aren't guaranteed a career afterwards and it's just for TV ratings? So, are we ready to hear what Adrienne has been up to post the show? She was signed to Wilhelmina Models in New York City and she modeled for several magazines including Life and Style Weekly, In Touch, Sync Magazine, Us Weekly, Star, OK, Stuff, People, Maxim, and she even made the Maxim hot list in 2005. Both the North American and Spanish editions of Marie Claire, Lucky Magazine, Supermodels Unlimited, Agenda Magazine, Von Dutch, Von Dutch Watches, Salon City, Macy's, Famous Stars and Straps, Lucky, Ed Hardy, Kinney's Bikinis, Nail Pro, Beverly Hills Choppers, and Merritt's Diamonds! Diamonds! In 2016, she was briefly signed to LA Models. However, she was quickly dropped from their roster. Unfortunately, the modeling industry is very much pick up, put down. Is anybody working? Does anybody want to work with you? Put you straight back down. It's a very cutthroat, throwaway career and industry. Adrian actually appeared in one episode of Bridal Plaster. You can go and watch it on my Chanel if you like, my love. It was very... A very interesting moment, all about weddings and the perfect celebrity wedding. God, Bridal Plasty was an absolute fever dream, wasn't it? Now, interestingly enough, she actually appeared in a separate TV show called My Fair Brady. Now, My Fair Brady was a reality TV show that went on for three seasons, and it basically followed Christopher Knight, who played Peter Brady in The Brady Bunch, and Adrian Curry. And Christopher Knight proposed to her on television in that show. And they actually met on a different reality TV show called The Surreal Life. Apparently, The Surreal Life was a show in which cameras recorded the castmates' participations in group activities assigned to them, but also their interpersonal relationships and conflicts. Sounds a little bit like Big Brother style but apparently they go on a road. They, like, go on, like, a road trip, I think. I, th I guess that's what I'm getting from this. I don't know. I've never seen it. It's very interesting. I'm going to cream. It reminds me a little bit of when we did the, the Swan, Where Are They Now? And Rachel appeared on that game show where they had to compete in teams. Very similar vibes. Very similar vibes. Do you remember that? In 2007, Curry and Knight appeared on the Dr. Phil show to discuss their marital issues on an episode dealing with large age gaps in relationships. My opinion, if you're asking for it, age gaps are gaps for a reason. There's going to be a gap in what you enjoy. <laughs> Dr. Phil predicted that their style of arguing, particularly Knight's hurtful comments, was a strong predictor of an impending divorce. The couple announced their separation on May 29th, 2011, and they filed for divorce in August of the same year, and it became final in 2013. And as of 2018, she is married to Matthew Road. Well, my loves, that was quite the little, like, back to front, upside down, in and out, up and down, round and round tour of a Where Are They Now from America's Next Top Model. But you think it's over? No, there's a little bit more of the video, my loves. So in 2020, a little live stream went live on Instagram between Adrienne and Shannon, in which they decided to spill the hot Darjeeling all about their experience on America's Next Top Model. Good heavens. I'm going to cream. The video is one hour and 53 minutes in length and it is available to watch on YouTube and it was posted one year ago. Now, I am absolutely, my loves, absolutely not going to tell you every single snippet of information from this video. I think you should absolutely go and watch it if you really have the spare two hours to watch and just really understand some of the drama that goes on behind the scenes and some of the drama that went on at the same time. Now, I'm going to give you a couple of highlights from that video, things that I think are relevant to this video, but also just downright shocking that I feel like you should know. Oh. So after Adrienne and Shannon kind of like reintroduce themselves, have a little bit of like a party, like reconnecting a little bit, they start to talk about the juicy gossip. So let's begin, shall we? Apparently in episode one, they actually cut a lot of Adrienne's hair off for the rooftop swimsuit. And do you remember those two photographers that were like, yeah, you need to put your leg in front of you. And then at the judging panel, I think it was Janice that was like, oh my God, your foot looks absolutely huge, which is a horrible thing to say to someone and give them like a complex about. But there we go. Apparently they cut off a lot of her hair for that photo shoot. And apparently she really enjoyed 
enjoyed that haircut. But of course, then we had the makeover in episode three, which gave her the famous hair that I think I was like gobsmacked. I was absolutely gobsmacked that any salon, any self-respecting salon would give her this hairstyle. Apparently, the hairstylist warned them that Adrienne's hair was so thin, I don't think I should sew this in her hair. Shocking. Apparently, Adrienne also now has permanent bald patches where hair no longer grows because of traction alopecia. And it's been a long time since that first season. And she said that Kissy giving her the tip of patting her head when it's itchy saved her life. Apparently, when she went home and they took out the braids, she had open sores and wounds in her head. I'm sorry, but no amount of hairstyling should give you open wounds on your head. Absolutely not. So most of the beauticians around where she lived didn't actually want to touch her hair because apparently it was oozing and she had to go downtown to a specific black hair salon and the hairdresser said, why did they sew in this weave in your white ass head? That's quoting, my loves. And I, I think I literally said, maybe not exactly the same thing in those words, but I said the same thing. Hair textures and types are very, very different. Something that works for some specific hair types is not going to work the same on other specific hair types. I still find it really shocking that someone decided instead of doing single bonds to do a sew-in weave on Caucasian hair. It doesn't make any sense for me. Apparently she had to use baby oils and pliers to crack each individual braid and it took hours. Now, if that's not a beauty horror story, I don't know what is. So later along in the Instagram live, they actually mention about the nude shoot. Now, Shannon says that she did not regret the nude photo shoot because one, Adrian didn't even get the prize, so it wasn't worth it. Exactly. And listening to her say this, I was like, of course, it was that kind of like light bulb moment for me where it's like, I have to remember each time that we're watching this, that we are watching reality TV. And I've said that a few times in this video because it's so easy to get swept up in the storyline that it's like, so if Shannon had have decided to go nude and had have really had that like moral moment for herself thinking that like maybe this wasn't the right choice maybe I didn't maybe I shouldn't have done this it doesn't matter that she didn't do it because it didn't bring her anything in her career she had such a flourishing career afterwards do you know what I mean? Jay Manuel purposefully had Adrienne shoot in front and centre in the couture house to get to Robin to make Robin have that kind of moment where she was really upset thinking I really don't want to model I don't want to model nude I do not want to have to be completely naked in this place just goes to show no say. Adrienne, in response to this, now this is paraphrasing, says that no one should have been surprised with her posing in Playboy because of what they did with the shoot then. And then she further said that Top Model broke her soul and there were about 300 people at that shoot. That to me... That's not safe, that's not lovely, it doesn't fill me with joy and confidence. Does it you? Next, they actually talk about something that I thought was really, really quite unnecessary to put in a show like this, which is, do you remember when they all got their bikini lines waxed? Do you remember this? Do you remember, I think it was, was it episode one? I think it was either, I think it was episode one, yes, because they all needed to model a bikini. So, Adrian actually shared some information in this video, which kind of makes me go like, uh, disgusting. Apparently, Adrienne was so uncomfortable during this scene where they were filming her have a bikini wax because there was a cameraman nearby that was really heavily breathing. This is what I mean. The thing is, what we see on the screen is like one or two people in a room. What we don't see is the massive amount of production that's going on behind the scenes. There was clearly sound people. There was producers running around. There would have been interns running around. There was cameramen and just all sorts of other people just being like, Oh, we're going to look inside your vulva, girls. Disgusting. That to me just seems like, oh, no, I don't want any of that. Absolutely. Do you have the bikini line waxing. No. Well, necessary sometimes, but also not on TV for everyone to see. Absolutely not. And lastly, they covered the topic that I kind of mentioned a little bit earlier in this video, and that is so there's going to be a little bit of a warning here because this topic is kind of like a little bit difficult to talk about. So during this part, Adrian basically talks about how starved the girls were in this cycle. Apparently at the snake photo shoot, which I also really don't like. I don't like the idea that they put live snakes in there. Poor little things. They were probably really frightened as well. Apparently that was the first time that they had access to catering. So of course she basically inhaled the food and they all ate so much at this photo shoot because there was no other food available to them. Apparently Elise pointed out to Adrienne that the chicken that she was eating was bloody and practically raw right at the bone. And of course that led to Adrienne's food poisoning situation. Apparently because Tyra Banks told her that she might not make it to the next round if she doesn't go to the judging panel, she ripped out her own IV and forced herself to go to that panel. Even though the judges then and there were like, oh, you need to take your health seriously. I don't even know. I don't, there are no words for that. No words. So they also get into a little bit of a conversation about Janice Dickinson. Now Janice Dickinson, 
Janice Dickinson. Apparently, there was a lot of tension between Tyra and Janice in Cycle 1, and now I can kind of understand that because I feel like both of them have very big personalities and kind of questionable personalities, which always, always makes very interesting tension, doesn't it? Apparently, Tyra and Janice would genuinely fight and Tyra would bark that Janice was just a booby model and was never high fashion. Imagine, just picture that for a moment. You're just Apparently they would fight up until like 2am at judging panels when all the models wanted to do was go back to the apartment and sleep. Can you imagine? This is really like Janice Dickinson's model. No, it's not, is it? This is really basically the Tyra Banks show extended edition. And kind of like the last little bit for this video I kind of want to say is they both talk about the Jays a little bit and Shannon mentions that she's no longer in contact with any of the Jays. But apparently after her recent cycle that she was on, which I believe is the All Stars one, I think that's cycle seven. I'm not going to watch it yet, girls. Jay Manuel tweeted out her snake picture and that's when they started to rekindle some sort of friendship. Or at least talking to each other, which I guess is something. Now, talking about Jay Manuel, he did actually do a tell-all live exposure, girls, whilst trying to sell his book. Now, I didn't really find a lot of that stuff kind of interesting at all in that live stream. I just kind of felt like it was a little bit of like Jay Manuel trying to get his back at Tyra whilst also writing a fictional book. Well, he claimed it as fictional, but it was also like, clearly it was based on his and Tyra's interactions. I don't know. We've got a lot of cycles to go through in the future, my lovely. So I don't necessarily want to focus on the judges too much and focus more on the contestants in this video because they're the kind of ones that, you know, the show is about, really. They're the ones that give us the juice. They're the ones that give us these gorgeous photos or in some cases, absolutely dire ones. In fact, actually, it's mostly the photographer's fault. And then Tyra for picking it for reality TV storyline purposes. I hope you have enjoyed my reaction and commentary to season one. And I very much look forward to doing the same again on season two and beyond. Let me know some of your favorite moments that we saw throughout this entire season and any other little juicy bits that you may know that I haven't covered in this video. Yeah, pop them in the comments. <gasps> yes. And with that, my lovelies, it is time for the Patreons. You can see yourself scrolling past on the screen here. Yes, you can. And I want to say a massive hello and welcome to Shortana Connolly, Slim Me, and Donuts for Life. Oh, I could do with Donuts for Life. That does sound delicious, doesn't it? Thank you guys so much for joining the Patreon. And if you're thinking about joining the Patreon, why don't you click the link in the description box below and you can see all the perks that you'll get. <gasps> yes. Today's Twitch shout out goes to Abs91. Thank you so much for following me over on Twitch, your stunning woman on the go. And if you want to be in with a chance of being featured in my next video's Twitch shout out, make sure you follow me over on Twitch. It is Luxaria Plays and I stream two nights a week. Oh. Two nights a week. <laughs> and that's Monday and Thursday, my loves. Once again, I want to say a massive thank you to my top tier Patreons. Loria, Stephanie Neotupski, Laura Ali, Steffi Tech, Orko Samoji, Abigail Ash, Beebles32, Caitlin Coating, Shell Herman, Christina Kyle, ContraPoints, Crafty Leaks, Danielle, Dr. A, Jevod, Elizabeth Stone, Igogo Yubari, Jarrah Pavlovsky, Jen Martin, Jenny Hendricks, Caitlin Wright, Min Min TM, Moisten98, Mariah Sherman, Nixie Tricks, Paolo Rivera, Pink Caramel, Princess Lillian, Rachel V, C Biscuit, Romano, Ryan Vita, Sasha Smith, Sexy Texy RN, Slampire Queen, Succubus Lena, Sushi9393, Travifull, Tromo, Victoria Carella, Victoria Waldock, and Zaya Naza. And with that, my loves, I am going to go and lay in the bath because my body is painful. <laughs> and I will see you in the next video.